Hey everybody, what's going on? It's episode 41 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and today we're going to talk all about the martial arts in mixed martial arts. I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm also Whistlekick's founder. Here at Whistlekick, we make the world's best sparring gear and some great apparel and accessories for traditional martial artists. Thanks to everyone tuning in again, and thank you to any of the new folks checking us out for the first time. Don't forget, you can find all of our past podcast episodes, show notes for this one, and a lot more at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're on our website, go ahead and sign up for the newsletter. We offer exclusive content and discount to our subscribers. It's also the only place to find out about upcoming guests on the show. So, you know we make stuff here at Whistlekick, and that includes some great t-shirts. They really run the gamut from comfy to cozy, functional to stylish. So, why don't you head on over to whistlekick.com and check out all the great t-shirts that we have to offer. But like I said, today's episode is all about MMA, mixed martial arts. And if you've listened to the show for a while, you know that I have some mixed feelings about the sport, and we're going to delve right into them today. My first MMA memory actually goes back to UFC, I think it was UFC 5, 1995. It was Hoist Gracie and Ken Shamrock's second matchup, and the thing that sticks in my mind was how quickly they went to the ground and they were there for what seemed like forever. And once or twice, I remember the referee standing them back up, but both of them were more comfortable on the ground. And so that's where they were. And I looked it up. It was actually a 37 minute match. So this is the old days. There weren't rounds. It was just till it was done. And this one ended in a draw. They just, they decided, you know what? Nobody's going to win this. Uh, like I said, it was the f- second matchup. Hoist Gracie won the first one. And what I find funny as I was doing a little bit of research for this episode, it's now more than 20 years later. Both of these guys are just about 50. I think one's on one side of the line, the other's on the other. So, uh, 101 years old combined is what I read. They're getting ready to fight again in a match with Bellator, uh, the, the other major mixed martial arts organization, Bellator. So um, that's funny. I I don't know if anybody's going to be super interested in that. I might check it out, but probably not. So what really stood out for me when I think back about that first experience with mixed martial arts was that I didn't see a lot of martial arts in there, at least not martial arts the way I define it. And the impetus for this episode was that you know, I've had a lot of people kind of poking me over the last few weeks, be it friends or martial arts colleagues or internet trolls or just these random articles that I come across. And they're all kind of taking these really strong liberties with the definition of martial arts. And that's the heart of what I want to talk about. What is martial arts? And throughout this episode, we're going to come back to that. So when I look at mixed martial arts, and I don't see a lot of martial arts, I'm seeing combat. I see fighting. And in fact, they refer to the participants in a mixed martial arts bout as fighters, not martial artists. And I think that that's significant. The other thing I see a lot of, and it's growing, from my vantage, is disrespect. And MMA really seems like it's become the new professional wrestling. And, you know, this might be the point where someone who is listening and and really interested or even participates in MMA starts to take some offense. And that's not what I'm trying to do here. It takes a lot of skill, a lot of talent to engage in that sort of combat. It's exciting to watch. I enjoy it. I think it's valuable and I think it is a necessary sideline to martial arts. But it's not martial arts. Now on an amateur level, I've seen some fights that I would sort of classify as martial arts. And I really love watching amateur MMA. I I think that it's so much more fun to watch that than the professional stuff. Because the people that are engaged in the amateur stuff, they're not out there for money. Some of them are trying to build a career out of it, but most of them just want to test their skills about somebody else, against somebody else. There's respect, there's honor, and these people are 
thanking each other so genuinely at the end of the match. I mean, there's something that really embodies the martial spirit when two people can step into a ring, beat the tar out of each other, and recognize that they're better for the experience and genuinely thank the person for putting their time and their body on the line in that contest. And I love that, and I support that. But that's not martial arts. So why isn't it? Let's, let's take a step back. Let's define what martial arts is. And if you've listened to the show before, you might have heard me say it like this. You might have heard me break it down into a definition. If When we take a look at the words martial arts, first and foremost, it's an art. It is a martial art. But the core of the term is art. Despite what some people are going to say, yes, you can be a great martial artist without fighting. In fact, in most martial arts schools, one of the things that is taught initially and continually reinforced throughout training is not the ability to win a fight, but to avoid a fight. And I think it takes a great deal of skill to avoid a fight. It takes humility. It takes confidence. It takes a lot of wonderful personality traits to make it through an altercation without actually engaging in a fight. But if martial arts isn't about fighting, what is it? What's it about? Martial arts is really about self-improvement. It's personal growth through the martial training that we do. Let, let me say it another way. Martial arts isn't about fighting today. It may have been in the past. I don't know. I wasn't there. But from what I've read of the great masters over the last hundred years, it wasn't. This is why I have an inherent problem with the term MMA, mixed martial arts. Because I've seen mixed martial arts. The way Bruce Lee defined Jeet Kune Do, it was a mixed martial art. I've trained at schools that incorporated various martial arts styles. They created something new and unique of their own. Those were mixed martial arts. But what we see in the UFC and Bellator and these other fight promotion organizations is that it's fighting, it's martial combat, mixed martial combat. And that's the term that I really think it should have, MMC, not MMA. And I can't take credit for that term. I read it years ago, I don't remember where, but I think it more accurately embodies what happens in one of these combat situations, one of these fights. Nobody on earth's gonna watch what goes on in a traditional martial arts school and then watch a professional MMA fight and think that they're the same thing. They might be related, they might have some things that correlate, but it's pretty loose. And so how do we know that? The majority of traditional martial arts schools teach a lot more than fighting skills. They teach respect. They generally have some code of honor. They teach life skills and self-respect and a whole bunch of other wonderful values, all these great reasons that so many of us martial artists encourage parents to get their children involved in martial arts. But look at the controversy that comes out of the professional mixed martial arts world. And yes, I'm going to continue to use that term MMA because it's the accepted term. Whether I like it or not, this is what people know that sport to be. Back at UFC 193, Ronda Rousey lost. She lost horribly. We saw that. But at the beginning of the match, she refused to touch gloves with Holly Holm. And a lot of people had a hard time with that, and I did too. And yes, you can go online, you can read Rhonda's comments about why she didn't do that. But at the end of the day, she was acting disrespectfully. She was bringing herself down to the level that she's claiming Holly Holm set for disrespect. And I've been to a lot of martial arts competitions over the years, and I'm sure a lot of you out there have too. And that kind of stuff does not fly in the martial arts world. I've seen people thrown out of tournaments for less. These aren't the same thing, and they don't get to use the same terms. I believe it when I read that the original idea behind the UFC was to bring in people from different martial arts and test them to see who won, to sort of see which martial art was quote-unquote best. But that idea is long gone. 
And we're starting to see some people that are making the jump from to MMA from sport karate and other traditional martial arts. Sage Northcutt is probably the, the best example right now. He came in, had a great first fight, did a nice job. Here's a respectful, upstanding, wonderfully athletic martial artist who has also engaged in an MMA bout. Sage Northcutt was a tremendously successful martial artist in the sport, martial arts world. But after all, there's no money there, at least not yet. But there is a fair amount of money in mixed martial arts. And I can't say for certain that that's why Sage moved over, but I'm guessing that has something to do with it. Now, not all traditional martial artists are going to do well in MMA. In fact, most wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. I hate getting hit. I tend to avoid things that might break my nose. And maybe I'm foolish, but that's as martial arts as traditional as I can really get, avoiding that sort of an encounter. That's how I was raised. So I'm not taking away anything from the people that choose to participate in this activity that I would not. I applaud it. I think it's great. If that's what you want to do, by all means, please do it. And I'll probably watch you. I've supported friends when they've trained for it. I've helped them out where I could. I've been to the matches. But it's not martial arts. It's fighting. It's a combat sport like boxing. Now, I watch boxing from time to time. It's impressive. I envy the skill that those fighters bring to their matches. But they're fighters. They're not martial artists. Neither are the majority of folks that step into an MMA match. Now, let me be clear. Majority. Most. There are some. Some of the folks that participate in MMA are legitimate and even excellent martial artists. Lyoto Machida has deep traditional roots. And from what I've seen, it shows in the way he conducts himself both inside the ring and in life. He is respectful. Now, sure, there are traditional martial artists that miss that whole respect and honor ideal. And I don't even mean the people that cross over into MMA. Most of us have met some martial artist that miss that concept. Some of them learn, some of them don't. We've had some folks come on the show that have talked about how they missed that piece early on, that maybe they had some strong skill and they got cocky. Now, I don't care how good of a kick someone like that throws. You're not a martial artist until you can embody the whole piece, the mental, the spiritual, the physical aspects. Now, a great martial artist isn't someone who can throw a great kick. It's someone who carries that warrior ideal through life. And they face challenges with grit and determination, and they respect the boundaries that are placed in front of them if they're appropriate to respect. And they use the concept of combat to hone their body and their mind into something better. Now, I'd say that everyone that participates in MMA gets the body part. These people are in great shape, and they're constantly refining their skills. They are amazing fighters, and I don't want to tangle with any of them. And I applaud what they do. But do they really better their mind? And I would say that most, again, let me underscore most, do not. And those that do are not doing so because of their participation in mixed martial arts, but because of who they are, or perhaps some traditional martial arts training. And the more money that gets involved in MMA, the less common it seems to be. And all you have to do to see what I'm talking about is watch a modern UFC event, and then go back and watch one of the first 10 or 20. They were a wholly different event. People treated each other differently. And I'm not saying one is better. But I am pointing out that there has been a degradation of martial arts attitude within MMA over time. Some of my best fight memories come from attending amateur MMA events. I said before how much I enjoy watching it. Watching the fighters come out, knowing that they're there just to get better, watching them touch gloves or even hug before they fight. And when it was over through the blood and the sweat, they're hugging again. And to me, that is just incredible. And while I doubt that 
all of them could be accurately described as martial artists. Some of these folks truly were. They had martial spirit. They had a warrior's spirit. And I'll watch that stuff all day long. And the other stuff, that's spectacle. It's professional wrestling for a new generation. But the violence is just that much more real. And that's not really my style. So, those are my thoughts. I really welcome yours. And I hope that you'll share them. So head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for the show notes. Sign up for the newsletter. Remember, this is episode 41, so go ahead, check all that out. Leave us some comments. See what other people have written. Do you agree with what I've said today? Whether you do or not, we really want to hear from you. So give us some feedback. Remember, if you want to say something on social media, if that's easier for you, we're at Whistlekick just about everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. I mean, you name it, we're all over the place. And please, if you haven't already, go ahead, leave us a review on iTunes, or if you get your podcast somewhere else, leave us a review there. Hopefully five stars, but if you've got some constructive criticism for us, we'll take it. Now, those reviews really help us a lot. They help new people find the show. And like I keep saying, we want to hear from you. This show isn't just about what we want to put out there. It's about what you want to hear. So let us know what that is. We want to know what you think so badly, in fact, that if you leave us a review and we read it on the air, we will send you free stuff. Seriously. And don't forget, we have our free apps on Google Play and the App Store. Tons of great feedback on those. People say they really prefer them to their podcast app. I'll stop blabbing now and let you go. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.